So Willie, we've come now to Lagoon where you've installed a cover. Yep. Um, maybe could you explain the size of it um, and how you installed the cover and whatever you see yeah, here. Yeah, so this Lagoon here is about 2.4 million gallon net. Um, it has both the Lagoon cover and a floating cover on top. Um, we've used the same material on both because the floating cover, it's going to be up access to elements the rain, the wind, but also the durability of it. As you can see there, it'll be moving up and down with the slurry level. Um, so it needs that strength, and we have that strength in the liner just to combat, combat um, uh, the movement and the twisting of the liner. Okay, so you've the same membrane as we would have seen in the previous yep. site, and you're using the same, you're, you're basically that's fixed outside. Yeah. The and inside the, and the an anch yeah, they're not, they're not all fixed at the same location, is that right? Um, no, we, you'd put uh, the liner, the first liner, the lagoon yeah. liner, into a trench and then you'd have, um, at a later date, if you were doing it, say, at a later date or together, you'd have another anchoring trench for the, the floating cover. Okay. So, you would so what, what am I looking at the pipes then? What are, what are they in reality? They're the, the pipes sticking up. They're the floats, so these are help with the buoyancy okay. of the liner, to just to, um, as it goes up and down. With the slurry, there's also the pipes on it, just a, a gradual release of the, the gas. So if you didn't have those there, you'd have pockets of air, so it'd be the gas of no way getting out. So, but it still reduces the ammonia levels up to 90%. Okay, and say for a system like this, you'd put in a submersible pump as well? Yeah, um, yeah, as you can see, there's quite a bit of water there, so you can see how much more storage they'd be getting. So we'd recommend putting in a, a submersible pump there with a float switch on, just that it uh, every so often that it would uh, pump off water so there's not too much on top. Okay, and in terms of agitating this then, what is the reality of that Where if someone needs to agitate? Well, we have t two options there. Um, they're going with a goalpost arrangement, which is like, uh, as you can imagine, the goalpost and the liner is attached to that there. So the liner's always down. So when you go to mix, you, um, you winch up your liner, so it gives you access. You have your concrete ramp yeah. in place, so you can reverse your mixer into the the opening to to uh, mix the slurry in the lagoon. Okay. Um, um, you also have a, a we're looking at a jetter system for the floor of the lagoon um, that you can take out of your discharge point and pump in through the jetter, so you can have a circulation. So we're looking at that as well. Okay. You know, as an option. Okay. And say when you're measuring your, you know, when your civils are done. You're measuring for your your liner. Yeah. Are you measuring at that point again for your cover then, or is that is there much as much science needed for that? Or it's a, it's pretty much the same size. Um, if you had to do an extra trench there, you would uh, allow just the extra meter right round just to right. um, just to uh, for the extra liner. Okay. So what size is this lagoon? This here's a two point four million gallon net. Okay. So and how much to do the liner first? The, the liner part, say how, roughly how much would that cost? The liner itself would be the the high 20s yeah um, and for the float cover it will be around the same again as we're using the same liner okay um, for both so it'll be the okay. high 20s as well and that excludes all civil works on the other yeah, side again includes yeah. excludes all civil works okay okay no thank you very much thank you